Good morning everyone, my name is Stuart Adams and I work at Ferris Science Limited and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about simultaneous targeted and non-targeted analysis using Orbitrap High Resolution MSMS. I'll briefly run through what Ferris Science Limited is, we'll talk on some of the LC high res mass spec strategies you can employ, we'll look at the multi-residue methods, I'll discuss some of the results. I'll make a few conclusions and I'll discuss where the future is potentially going with this type of technology. So what is FERA? We are a supplier of scientific solutions in the, the agri-food supply chain. Basically we study science from the farm to the fork and everything in between. And we're based just outside of York in the UK. We've got over 100 years of scientific experience and expertise behind us. And on an average year, we'll run about 600 research and development projects. And this runs in combination with over 100,000 samples a year for routine testing. And routine testing is anything from pesticides in your potatoes to bugs eating your strawberries. Science is never done in isolation, and this is a very good example of it. We've currently got 1,000 active collaborative partners spread across the globe. We're the National Reference Laboratory for many of the food testings for residues. We work in the GLP and ISO compliant facility. And just when you think we're actually going to switch off the lights at five o'clock and go home, we maintain an emergency con contingency capability. So we've got a scientist on call 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year, so that we, we're there if something happens. So let's talk about what type of not targeted analysis we're going to do. We're looking at 167 veterinary medicines plus the associated 56 labelled internal standards and this is split across the 12 classes of veterinary medicines. We currently follow EU 2002 657 EC and all the amendments to the document which establish the method criteria for our, how our method should perform. This document is currently under review to look at new technologies that are available within SIDE that are actually available in the market now. 2002 indicates that they probably started talking about the document and the method performance probably in the late 90s. So it's time for the document to be overhauled and updated. What kind of analytical strategies are we, um, we're going to employ using high res MSMS LC? Well, the one thing that's very abundant when I, I come from a triple quad background and it's the amount of information you'll get from a simultaneous targeted and non-targeted acquisition. We're currently evaluating the thermal scientific q exactive focus and we're looking at two specific data acquisition modes. We're looking at a data dependent acquisition mode which requires a bit more user interaction and we're looking at a variable data independent acquisition mode. And as I say, we're evaluating them veterinary medicines because there's so many classes and they encompass so many different chemical properties. And we're not just looking at the QE focus, we're actually looking at, we're running all the extracts from both the QE focus and we're running it on what has been the gold standard in veterinary medicine analysis, a TSQ um, Quantiva MSMS. So when we're looking at the high res data, we're looking to see what the sensitivity is like, what the linearity we, what linearity we can achieve, what's the selectivity right? Are we looking at the right peak? Have we got the right compound? We're looking at mass accuracy and we're looking at the repeatability. So it's not just a case of we want to do this in one day, we want to be able to do this every day. So how does the data dependent high res MS2 work? It's both a targeted and a non-targeted approach. We're basically operating in a full scan mode from 100 to 1000 mass to charge. And in, within inside the, the method, we've got what's called an inclusion list. So if the intensity of our parent ion, bearing in mind we're using the accurate mass for this, reaches a certain intensity, it triggers a scan. So we pick that ion and we fragment it and we scan to get a spectra. Conversely, variable data independent still does the full 100 to 1,000 mass range, but continue, it is continually taking mass segments and fragmenting those as well. So they're giving you two different types of information. Variable data independent doesn't require the operator to go in, 
and set an inclusion list, it's automatically happening in the acquisition mode. So what does the multi-residue method look like? Well, you'll see a lot of catches is discussed in sort of analytical circles for pesticides and it's becoming more prevalent in veterinary medicines. So we've taken the catches approach. It's acidified acetonitrile. We're homogenizing the sample in the presence of the solvent. We're adding salts. We're doing a bit of a dispersive SP cleanup. Uh, we're taking the extract down to dryness and we're reconstituting in acetonitrile water. The LC conditions are, are fairly typical. It's a C18 column, but you notice we're only doing a one microliter injection. We're trying not to disturb too much the peak shape and our detectability of our early liters, nor affect the later looting compounds. Uh, because we're evaluating multiple modes in the QE focus, we're taking two runs for the VDIA. We're doing a positive and a negative run. And for the data dependent MS2, Again, we're acquiring both in the positive and the negative run. Um, we've got the instrument set for a resolution of 70,000 because we expect the cattle tissue to be a dirty egg matrix and therefore we want that extra sensitivity. How do we design the experiment? Quite simply, it's seven spikes at half, one, one and a half, and two times the MRL or MRPL for each compound, and we've got two blanks in each of the batch. For the cattle tissue, we're doing three batches on three separate days, so we, we're going to get a full validation data set, which Ferro, this is the standard approach Ferro would take, validating a new method for veterinary medicines. And then we're actually going to assess how does the method work for milk and cattle urine. And please note, we're not doing the full validation, we're merely assessing the likelihood of the method working if we take that approach. So what do the results look like? Sarofloxin, one of the quinolones. You can see we're getting good agreement between both acquisition modes of the QE focus and the Quantiva. The mass accuracy that we're observing is all under two ppm in both the acquisition modes, both the data dependent and the VDIA. The calibration graphs, we've all got excellent calibration. And to note that the calibration graphs for the QE focus were using the accurate mass parent iron, whereas the triple quad we're using the quantitation transition as you'd expect. It's not just one class of compounds we're getting good calibration for, we're getting good calibration for the NSAIDs using flunixin as an example. We're getting good agreement between the results, we're getting good relative standard deviations and we're getting good agreement between the, gr the calibration graphs. When we're running the extracts they're basically split two ways a set go to the QE focus and a set go to the Quantiva. But is that the end of the story? No, from the nitrobidazos, ronidazo, we're seeing exactly the same type of pattern. We're getting good agreement between the, th the three acquisition modes. We're getting good mass accuracy with both the QE focus acquisition modes. And the other thing that I was always taught when we're doing method validations, we always look at points across the peak. So one of the questions asked was, how many points across the peak are we actually getting? Well, down at our reporting level, we're getting nine points across the peak. We're supposed to have ten, that's what we've always been told, that's what I was taught when I was at university, you have ten points across the peak. Well, with nine points across the peak, we're still getting an excellent calibration. So it raises the question, how many points across the peak do you actually need? Uh, one of the coccidial stats, halofugenone, we've got an extraneous result down at the bottom indicating that perhaps we need a bit more work looking at the DDMS2, but it's one set of results out of over four levels. And again, we've still got good relative standard deviations. The mass accuracy, we're still observing it, it's less than 2 ppm in both the acquisition modes. And the calibration graphs are all giving excellent calibration and we're still detecting quite happily when you're using the Q focus down at the, the bottom spike level. Ibamectins, again, it's the same story. Calibration graphs between the, the two QE focus modes, the data dependent and the VDIA, we're getting good calibration, but what you see, there's maybe a question of sensitivity there at the moment that we're looking into. But the readback values we're getting are comparable between the three acquisition strategies and the relative standard deviations are what I would consider within spec, they're not fantastic and they're not excellent, but they're within specification. 
tetracyclines, do doxycycline. Again, we're getting mass, we're getting a good mass accuracy. And I, what I meant to say is that all the iron ratios for the Quantiva, they're all passing, and we're getting a comparable data set between the three acquisition strategies. One of the things you have to accept when you're doing a multi-residue method is that not every peak shape is fantastic. You're making compromises. We're initially looking at 167 compounds, so we've got to make compromises in what the LC method is. The mass spec won't change the chromatography, only we can. What's the sensitivity like for other classes? All the, the half times MRL or MRPL spikes, we're all we're detecting them with ease using the DDMS2 modes and the VDIA mode. What's the linearity like? Linearity is very good to excellent for all the compounds we're looking at. Some of the compounds are internally standardized, like these three here. Penicillin isn't internally standardized, and we're getting an excellent linear calibration. Even when we switch off the internal standard, we're getting an excellent calibration compared to when we're using the internal standard. <coughs> Moving on to the slightly more exciting thing, we're not just taking the accurate mass of the parent iron, we're actually starting to look at the fragment patterns. So for the parent iron, we're getting a mass accuracy of just under 2 ppm. We've got our database, what fragmentation pattern of what we expect, and we're getting a fragmentation pattern of what we've actually acquired. So how are these looking, how do they compare with the database values? Well, the mass accuracy of fragments one and two are around about the half ppm mark. So what we're finding is that actually the, da the quantification data we get between with the QE focus operating in the two modes is comparable with what used to be the gold standard, a triple quadruple, our mass accuracies are all under two in all cases. And what we've discovered is when we're doing the data processing, you actually need to think about how your IT infrastructure is set up so you can maintain your data processing efficiency. But when we're actually setting up the methods and the instruments to run, we're finding it's taking an equivalent amount of time. And what we've still got to do, I've presented a small piece of the data. Uh, we've still got to assess all the fragment patterns for all the analytes and check the mass accuracies of the MS2 product ions. We've still got to finish all 167 compounds for the complete comparison of the methods. And we've still got to evaluate a non-targeted approach using the D VDIA data. It's not just me sitting in the lab doing all the work. We work in a team. We've got Mike, who's our scientist lead at Ferra. We've got Danny, Kate, and George that are all working together to, make this, to assess this technology. And then we've got, we're collaborating with Thermo Fisher, so we're getting a lot of support from Ed, Olaf, and Franz.